I like Zcash for philosophical reasons because uh, I think that the privacy innovations that team has been able to drive forward with the capital they've been um, that they've raised has just been tremendous. And you're seeing some of that research find its way into Ethereum, into Tezos, into, into many other protocols. Um, but more importantly, I, I view Zcash as I know I just used this uh, this term for Morgan, but you know another canary in the coal mine, right? As Zcash goes, so goes crypto privacy, um, and ultimately fungibility, because the regulators allow Bitcoin to exist right now. Let's not mistake ourselves. They allow it to exist right now because there are companies like Chainalysis and Elliptic that can trace illicit transactions and dark web activity. That's going to get tougher to do, and in part is going to get tougher to do because of privacy coins. Now, flip side is. You can't actually have enterprise crypto if JP Morgan's customer transactions are happening on a public <laughs> blockchain, right? So how do you solve for this? Um, Zcash has the concept of T addresses and Z addresses, transparent versus you know, ultimately shielded. And right now, T addresses are the vast majority of transactions. But um, I believe that over time, uh, they're maybe the most likely, you could argue maybe you know, Bitcoin or, or some pockets of Ethereum transactions become equally private, but in terms of privacy by default, I think you know, Zcash is the most likely to kind of usher in that, that era of truly private um, sensor re uh, resistant commerce. And there are ways to prevent illicit actors from uh, you know, exploiting the system and, and, and just driving a bunch of money to Iran or through Sanchez. <laughs> and the answer is pretty simple. You regulate the edges because people are always going to need to transact in and out of exchanges um, whether or not the actual on-chain transactions are private, which hopefully they are.